Good morning, my name is Chris Wurst. I'm the tree farm supervisor and an urban forestry coordinator with the Texas Trees Foundation. This is Eddie Vallejo. He is our tree farm assistant and we're going to show you how to plant a tree this morning. So we have the tree we're going to be planting right here. Um, for the most part it is as simple as putting a tree in a hole and putting some dirt on it but there's a few things that you need to make sure you do that will help the tree grow as healthy as it possibly can. So the first thing we're going to do is lay the tree on its side like so and we're going to either take a shovel or just our feet and we're going to whack the pot like this. And the reason we're doing this is so that the soil in the pot gets broken up a little bit and it makes it easier for us to pull it out of the pot. So once that's all good and broken up, we're going to pull it out. That looks pretty good. So the next step we want to do might be a little bit hard to see. There are roots circling around the, we call it the root ball, which is basically the part of the tree where the soil and the roots are. And the reason this happened is because the roots were growing in the container. They got to the edge of the container. They want to keep growing but they couldn't go outward, so they just started circling around the root ball. So what we're going to do is Eddie's going to take a shovel and we're just going to break this up just a little bit. Want to go all the way around the tree, including the bottom. Some trees will have more or less roots circling like this, but we want to make sure they're all nice and broken up so that they can grow outward instead of keep circling around. The next step, we are going to try to find what we call the root collar. This is the stem of the tree. Everybody knows about the roots. Where the stem of the tree and the roots meet, we call that the root collar. So on this tree, sometimes it gets buried when it's grown in a nursery a little bit. They'll replant the tree, put it in a new pot, and they'll put some soil up on top so that it's covering the actual root collar. So in this one, it looks like we might need to dig down just a little bit to find that root collar. And you'll know it's the root collar because you'll see larger roots, we call structural roots, coming out of the stem of the tree. We're almost there. Sometimes it's really low, sometimes it's really high, it just depends. All right, that's pretty good. You can start to see some of the roots popping out here. So if we didn't do this, these roots that are kind of going up, those would have potentially become girdling roots. So they would have grown up, kind of wrapped themselves around the stem of the tree. And if we didn't um, remove some of this dirt, it would be as if the tree were choking itself like this. They're going to become girdling roots, we call them, which circle around the tree. So now that we've done that, we've found the root collar. The next step is to figure out how deep our hole needs to be. So what we're going to do, we are going to make a little indentation on this side, another indentation over on this side, and then we're going to use our shovels as measuring tools. So ideally, when we plant the tree, we want that root collar to be maybe just an inch or so above level with the ground. Um, that way, once we water the tree, the tree's gonna settle down a little bit, so that root collar will be right about level with the ground. Let's take one shovel, put it here. Take another shovel, measure the depth of your hole. So the, sh the hole is about this deep. So we're gonna go over here to the, our tree, put it up against the base of the uh, root ball and if we look here the holes about this deep if we were to put the tree in the hole now we're gonna have what maybe five inches the tree's gonna be too deep so what we have to do is we have to backfill the hole with a little bit more soil so he's gonna help me do that real quick We're going to try to level it out at the bottom, 
just to make sure that the tree has a nice flat surface to set on. And then we're gonna go ahead and measure again. So now the hole is roughly this deep, we can tell. We're gonna go back to our tree, measure again. Looks like we still have maybe three inches that we have to put back into the hole. Some holes you're gonna have more soil I have to backfill, others you're gonna have less. If you were to do this at home where you don't have an auger digging the hole for you, you're probably not gonna have to worry about this as much because you're gonna dig down just as far as you possibly have to. I'm gonna measure the hole again. That look good? Yep. All right, so it looks like the hole will be right about at level with the root collar. So next step, if you have a smaller tree, you might be able to lift it. Otherwise, I would just say roll it right on into the hole. We wanna get it as centered in the hole as we can. And then we're gonna to wanna to get it as up and down as we can have it. Go ahead and kinda of do a 360 if you can, making sure it's nice and straight. And then if you're doing this with two people, it's a lot easier because you're gonna have one person hold it straight while the other goes ahead and fills it in with soil. And as the soil is getting filled in, you're going to want to tamp it down with your feet just a little bit. So we don't want to completely compact the soil, which would prevent the roots from growing outwards but we also don't want any air pockets in there, which could also damage the roots. So this part is somewhat of an art, but you wanna kinda just tamp it down just a little bit, but not to the point where you're really compacting the soil. So if it's looking like it's good, nice and straight, you can help your partner fill in the rest of the hole, like so. And if you have any, any pot soil that came out while you were getting the tree out of the pot, you don't want to put that into the hole because we want the tree as much as possible to get used to the native soil that you're putting it in. So that's why we use the soil from the hole rather than the soil from the pot. As you're putting this in, as much as you possibly can, you want to leave maybe a three inch gap between the soil you're putting in and the actual stem of the tree. And the reason for that is you don't want to have any soil up against the stem that could potentially cause these girdling roots or potentially fungal infections or bacterial infections or other things like that could harm the tree. So once you're at this point where it looks like the tree is more or less full, we're gonna make a donut around the tree. So on top of the area that you just filled in, you're gonna take a shovel or maybe a rake and any extra soil, we're gonna make a nice, kind of like a hill donut shape. And the reason for this is the donut is going to help funnel water if it rains down into the root system, as opposed to having it wash off and not do anything good for the tree. So this is where if you have any excess soil from the pot, you can go ahead and put that on top of your donut. And as you can see, we've got a nice donut shape forming. There's a gap here between the stem of the tree and the donut, and it's forming like that. Just like that. looking good all right that looks pretty good we got our donut shape going on our last step is going to be to put mulch around the tree so Eddie is going to grab a big old bucket of mulch 
And the first thing I'm gonna do is how to show you how to do it the wrong way. And the reason I'm doing this is because lots of landscapers and people in general use mulch this way, it's improper, and you need to know what to avoid. So, we're gonna take our mulch, we're gonna go all the way around the tree, like so. Sprinkle it all around. Now, a lot of people will make what we call a mulch volcano, where they take all their mulch and they push it right up against the stem of the tree like this. This is about one of the worst things you could possibly do to a newly planted tree. The reason for that, the reason we have mulch in general, is to retain moisture for the roots of the trees. So if we have a rainstorm or something, the mulch is gonna help retain the moisture so that it doesn't evaporate and the tree doesn't have as much moisture that it needs. When you make a mulch volcano, what this does is it, one, prevents the rainwater or water from your hose from getting to the roots of the tree. It's all gonna be trapped inside of this mulch. If you've ever grabbed a wet clump of mulch, you're gonna know that it holds water pretty well. The other problem with this is because the mulch is, we call it organic matter, it's basically wood chips, that's gonna start to rot. So what that's gonna do is it can invite bacteria and funguses right along the base of the tree, right along the stem, which can end up harming the tree in the long run. So, we don't want to do a mulch volcano. We want to pull the mulch back from the stem of the tree about as far as the donut. So we're pretty much just going to cover the donut that we made. So you want, again, maybe three or so inches around the base of the stem that's completely cleared off, no mulch, no extra soil. And then we want about an inch or two of mulch all the way around the top of our donut. This is, at this point, as much an art as it is a science. So mine might not look the prettiest, but you can get pretty meticulous about this if you want to be. That mulch all nice and even. All right, so that's it. We've planted our tree. It's nice and mulched. It's in the ground um, with any luck. This tree will end up being a nice, healthy tree 20, 30 years in the future. The only thing we're gonna have to do now is come in and water it in, and then these trees will actually be irrigated. But if you were to do this at home, you're gonna wanna water it maybe once a week for the hottest parts of the year, and then maybe every other week during the winter.